Welcome to the Music Center, the Performing Arts Center of Los Angeles County. My name is Mark Slavkin. I'm Vice President for Education here at the Music Center. I'm delighted to welcome you to today's program where we'll highlight the exciting efforts of one local public school to strengthen arts education for all their students. You might be asking, what does arts education in a local school have to do with a glorious performing arts center like the Music Center? And the answer, quite frankly, is everything. The Music Center is much more than the four glorious theaters here in our downtown campus. The Music Center is a leadership organization committed to strengthening the arts and culture throughout Los Angeles County. And one core part of that mission is to strengthen arts education in K-12 schools. Indeed, the Music Center believes that the arts belong as part of the core curriculum for every student in Los Angeles County. And to that end, we offer a wide array of programs and initiatives, all designed to support quality arts education. One of our signature leadership initiatives is the Music Center's Bravo Award program. The Bravo Award was created to honor and recognize excellence in arts education. And each year, we single out individual teachers as well as entire schools who are doing the very best to bring the arts to their students. The Music Center Bravo Award program is made possible in large part thanks to the generous support of Club 100 of the Music Center. One of our dedicated support groups comprised of professional women who have a passionate commitment to the arts and education. And all of us at the Music Center are grateful and proud of the support of Club 100 that allows us to present the Bravo Award each year. Recently, several leaders of Club 100 had a terrific idea to go out into the award-winning Bravo School each year and document through video the incredible work underway in these schools. Our hope is that by sharing the look inside these Bravo Award winning schools, we can inspire and motivate other schools to learn from this effort and gain inspiration to do more in their own school community to strengthen arts education. In today's program, we're gonna take a look at the 2005 Music Center Bravo Award winning school, Crescenta Valley High School in the Glendale Unified School District. Crescenta Valley is a comprehensive high school with all the opportunities and challenges facing all high schools in California. What sets it apart though is its remarkable commitment to offering quality arts education for their students. Crescenta Valley owes their success to remarkable leadership from their administrative team. It takes principals who believe in the arts and are willing to go the extra mile to support their teachers. We're pleased to present in today's program a brief look inside the remarkable work of Crescenta Valley, and we hope it will encourage and motivate, inspire you to take these lessons back to your own school and community so that all kids can benefit in the arts. Let's take a look. given the opportunity to act and to sing, I kind of found out that I could excel in those areas and I've pretty much changed my whole outlook on what I'm interested in. I've allowed myself to get a lot better and, you know, creatively and thinking better about my artwork and not just doing things. I feel like I'm so much more connected to just the world now. I'm really inspired by people a lot and by the things people do. At this stage, I think I need to focus more on kind of expanding myself out there and just experiencing everything and this place has really taught me that. I've learned a lot about myself and I've also learned a lot about working with a cast, like working with a team and make beautiful music. I've learned to work with other people, mesh ideas and create something new. I take art as a means of me to kind of like release my energy and just enjoy my time, the one hour that I have there until I go to the next class and 
face uh, another lecture. Everything always begins with the students. We have a group of students that's very interested in pursuing the arts and they're supported by their parents and the community. But the key ingredient to building a special arts program is the quality of the teachers and the instructors. And at CB we are so very fortunate to have such artists that share their passion for the arts with their students. The teachers have been inspired all of their lives, which is why they chose to study at the college and university level their specific area of the arts, whether it's drawing and painting, choral music, instrumental music, drama, whatever it is, it has always spoken to them. And in turn, they share that passion with their students. One year of arts is required by both the University of California and the Cal State system. So that alone lets parents know that the arts are considered important by the colleges and universities and that students need to pursue a study in the arts. And then colleges and universities are interested in students that have strong passions for subject matter, whether it's English or history. And a student that pursues the arts for three or four years, oftentimes that becomes the focus of their autobiographical essay. And many private schools in the University of California demands an autobiographical essay. Students oftentimes write about their experience performing, their learning their craft, their ability to travel as connected with the arts program here. Here at Crescenta Valley we have advanced studio art and there's three options in the portfolio. You can have draw paint, you can do design, and you can also do a three-dimensional portfolio. And then we also have um, AP art history. First year students learn single camera production. They also learn film theory. In the second year we do broadcasting, we do a daily news program. They also do their own independent PSAs and short films and we do more advanced genre study and film auteur study. I teach five courses. I teach two audition classes and three entry level classes. The two audition classes are symphony orchestra, which is full winds and strings, and we hold auditions and we accept 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And then I have a jazz band where we accept 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And we also have a class, well, band actually is marching band first semester and band second semester. And then we have a string orchestra, which is entry level. It takes 9th through 12th graders. And then we have a wind ensemble. We have diversity on a few different levels in the choral program, from beginner to advanced choirs. And so I have two choirs that are open to anyone, any grade. So even seniors that are maybe just looking for a fine arts credit can take a women's choir or a men's choir. And I also have choirs that vary quite a bit in literature types. Obviously a men's choir is going to do men's choir literature, women's choir the same thing. There's two women's choirs. One of them tends to do a little lighter music. We stick with a lot of folk songs, um, easier types of pieces. And then the advanced women's choir does very high level literature, focusing mainly on classical, but some 20th century literature as well. Um, the chamber choir does chamber pieces unaccompanied music. They, we don't even have an accompanist in the class. We don't use a piano. We don't need it usually. And then I have a group that meets before school every day and it's not for credit at this point. They just show up at zero period. We all show up at 6.45 every morning and we do show pieces. So we do contemporary acapella with vocal percussion, we do vocal jazz, and then every once in a while we'll choreograph a piece and do a Broadway show tune kind of thing with some dancing. And so, so I try to keep it very, very open and wide ranging so that any student who wants to sing or learn to sing has opportunity to do exactly that. We have five dance classes three beginning, one intermediate, and one advanced level dance. And the beginning classes, um, any student is uh, able to participate regardless of prior um, background in dance. And in the intermediate and advanced levels, 
there by audition. And we have a, a yearly audition and then students are placed into the appropriate class. I will give them the show they expect and deserve. We have several levels of, of theater here. We have an introductory class. We have two classes of introductory uh, theater. Uh, well, then we have an intermediate class, which is a methods class. It deals, deals a lot with theater history, as well as uh, acting methods and such. Uh, directing, writing, we sort of do all the guts and glue in that class. And then we have a production class. And in the production class, um, that's where they do the fall play, they do the main stage play. Uh, they do um, festivals, they go to different festivals. Uh, in addition to all of that, we also have a technical theater class in which they learn uh, sound engineering and sound design, lighting design. They should be able to uh, move right from that class to a job in the industry. I mean, we have the type of equipment that will allow that. Uh, and then finally, we have a, a musical theater course in, in uh, which they actually put on the musical and they get credit for that. Well, the arts extends beyond the arts program. It's in the history classes, in the English classes, oftentimes in the English classes they'll act out a scene or they'll draw the symbols that are represented by a story or a play. In science, uh, they're drawing what they're seeing happening under the microscope. The um, foreign language department has a major arts component. They're not only teaching the language, they're teaching the culture, the history, the literature, the arts. And then the history classes also have a major arts component, especially the AP European history class. Research has shown that students who take art classes do better overall. We all know about how important music is and how it helps us be better students and how it helps us uh, study better and so forth. Um, well, when I taught art in high school, before I became a counselor, I noticed then the difference between students who had not had art and how well they did in geometry as opposed to the students who had had art. Um, we had a unit on perspective and of course it's just general drawing of, of forms and taking the three-dimensional and making it two-dimensional. That's geometry and the ability to visualize the three-dimensional world and break it down into the two-dimensional world helps them to see geometric objects, the, the shapes of them, and kids just generally did better in geometry after having art. And I really think it is because they had art. Absolutely, I do. So there's a lot, a lot of research behind it as well, but I certainly observed it myself personally. What we do with the theater program is we try to meet both the theater arts standards as well as the English language arts standards and with the framework and we give invitational assemblies for the school and uh, we will have activities that are geared toward the English classes, whether it's writing assignments, whether it's looking at the structure of the play, understanding the components of a drama, conflict, those kinds of terms that have natural crossover. Um, in addition, when, with our um, elementary school workshops, we have given um, lesson plans to the elementary school teachers that are designed specifically for their content area standards so that they can use the experience of seeing live theater as another text for them to read and then respond to in their own classrooms. I think that we're able to be flexible. We have some scheduling options that allow students to open up their schedule to be able to have an art elective because there's the schedules are so um, rigorous now with the academics that it's hard for a lot of times for kids to fit in an elective in art but with scheduling options of zero period and being able to take summer school so they can open up a time then they're able to um, have room in their schedule to have an art class. Well the associated student body the ASB provides some seed funding to the performing arts classes and then many of the performing arts programs have parent booster clubs that also raise money to support the program. In addition, when they're doing a performance, they'll be selling concessions. So they're looking at a, a variety of different ways to raise money, car washes, all kinds of ways to raise money to support the, the programs. I know, for example, that they're turning our small black box theater 
into a, uh, a theater environment that'll have specific theater style seats and they've asked for parents and community members to donate enough funds to purchase a seat. So between the community, uh, foundation, grants, parent booster clubs, and the ASB, we find ways to find the funds to keep the programs going. I did need additional financial resources to launch this course. I've been able to take advantage of the regional occupational program in LA County. That's a program that provides uh, extra financial money through uh, Perkins money that is set aside by the state for career technical programs. And since my class is also a career technical education program, because students can go into media production, there are a lot of new jobs in media production, this also qualifies for their funding. Uh, we have a booster club which just now, I think within a year, they formed, they incorporated into a foundation. So hopefully we can apply for grants. Uh, students fundraise themselves. We sell candy bars, we sell entertainment books, we sell certain items that generate revenue. And we ask the parents to donate. We have a donation campaign, but uh, it, it is expensive. To do it right, you need some money, unfortunately. And what people don't understand is one tuba might cost $6,000. A timpani might cost two or $3,000. Marimbas might cost four or $5,000. So the equipment that we need, very expensive. But once we have it, hopefully if you maintain it, keep it in good shape, it'll last you 10, 15, 20 years if you take good care of it. We charge a $5 art fee for the students, um, so that brings in a little bit of money. There's been some money through the school that keeps getting cut. This year it took a big cut. We ran out of money pretty quickly. So I think that's something that I'm going to be facing more in the future. I try to do a lot of things with recycled materials and recycled paper, recycled aluminum, soda can. You know, I try to be creative in that sense. But especially for the AP class, I mean, they need good quality stuff and you can't really ask them to bring in very much. I've been toying with the idea of doing like projects that we could maybe um, auction off and try to raise some money that way, but that's, that's something I am going to be having to deal with more as funds get cut more and more. One of the things that we've been lucky is, is that we got some donations uh, the last year from JPL. We've partnered with JPL, our school has a partnership with them, and uh, we received some computers and some monitors from them. The only problem was that it wasn't enough computers to fill out all of the school. So, you know, there's, they go here and there. And so we got some monitors, but not a complete set for the classroom. And it's the kind of thing where it's, it was a computer that, that they were getting rid of. So it was already two or three years old. So it was a great thing for us. It was an upgrade for what we had before, but it's, we could still have newer computers. I have just short of 200 students involved in the program, um, and I built that from, I think it, we were under 100 when I first got here, and I think a lot of that is just an energy for the program and showing the students that it's a, about more than singing pop music or singing jazz. This is about learning a lifelong skill, about having a good time doing it, and about being a part of a community. Choir is really a community, and so I think especially with the boys, having a sense of it's okay to be a guy and to be a singer. I really try to pick music that showcases what they can do, what they will be successful at. And I kind of also, I gently bribe them all to bring their friends to choir. And it's amazing what food will do for a teenage boy, but, but they'll bring their friends into class and then they have a great time and so they stay. And I've had a number of boys come to do a favor for a friend, and they stay for the rest of the year because they find out that it's well worthwhile and that it's very enjoyable. And the camaraderie amongst my men, I think, is almost stronger than in and amongst my women. They, they take great pride in being a team, even if that team isn't getting sweaty every day. When I first came here, we had just two drama courses. We had an inter introductory course, and we had an advanced course. And uh, now we have uh, five classes of theater. Uh, 
when we talk about increased uh, interest, I think what we're, we're looking at is um, there are more opportunities for students here. Uh, we did just two main stage shows. Uh, now we do upwards of 11 shows. There is opportunities for so many kids at so many levels. You have kids who are inexperienced, uh, we have shows for them, and we have kids who have done a great deal of things and we have shows for them also. Uh, we also have an improv group, a comedy sports improv group. Um, we um, have opportunities in directing where the students direct. So th the point is there's so much for kids to do and so many different opportunities that it's going to start attracting more kids. As far as the success goes, I actually I asked the students that. Like, what draws you here? Why do you want to be in, in the class? And we had a couple answers. We had one, at assemblies and performances that we've been at, when they were younger, they saw us and they wanted to be in the group which I think is nice, because they have that connection. Uh, and of course, they say it's a family. They know these students, because it is ninth through 12th. That's a unique situation, because most courses in high school, they're all 10th grade, they segregate them by grade. Well, here we have, I mean, ninth graders to 12th graders can interact. They're all trying to do the same goal. We're all trying to learn a piece of music or understand what they're doing. And uh, I also just think the community. I mean, we have a very supportive community supportive administration. Uh, I enable the kids a lot. We have officers in class that aren't just in name, they actually do things. I teach the presidents how to conduct. We have secretaries that help take role. We have librarians that pass out the music. I, I show them how to organize the music, how to put it in score order. And so with this student leadership, I think they take an ownership in the program and even when we choose m music, I will choose maybe eight tunes that I think are appropriate. I give them to the kids, and they will weed out three or four. So they still have the sense that they're choosing the music. Even though I've kind of pre-selected it, they get to kind of make the final choice based upon what they enjoy and what they want to do. I think that helps a lot, too. I would like to think that because the kids have participated in art, in drama, in music, the visual and performing, but the performing arts, um, I think they, they feel more comfortable in front of a group of people and certainly that helps them in interviews for jobs and for a lot of the private co colleges and universities to which they apply. Um, but overall, you know, we have a wonderful acceptance rate at the UCs, at the Cal States and many of the private universities and I, I would like to think that yes, there's a direct correlation between what the kids learn here in the arts to how well they do uh, in their classes, on the tests, and so forth. So yeah, I, I hope that it's there. I think it's there, yeah. The parents, I stay in contact with them as much as I possibly can via email, phone calls, um, inviting them to come on our trips to every performance that we can do, and to also help them realize that some of these students are only coming to school every day, or the reason they get up in the morning to come to school is because of the, their arts classes. This is what keeps them going. And if they can keep coming every day for choir, for band, that their English grades are gonna be higher because they're there every day. And I think that my students represent our school and our community well. We go out and we tell people we're from La Crescenta and, and they, do, they win awards, they're very, very, hard-working and talented students and so they win awards but I think above and beyond that um, we receive letters from places we travel commenting on how well behaved the students were and so I think it goes above and beyond just going and winning trophies um, I think I think it's also about giving the community a sense of pride don't feel that you have to reinvent the wheel there are a lot of teachers out there already teaching there is a lot of textbook information, a lot of course outlines already there for you to start using. Go looking for those. We as uh, film teachers are very happy to share what we've done in our class, what has worked uh, successfully with you. Um, so look for other people to help you out. Work hard. Uh, work very hard at it. It's worth it in the long run. The schools really need to have support of the administration, obviously, but also uh, qualified teachers, enthusiastic teachers, teachers who are skilled at teaching art is very important. If you have all of those things and still have a small program, start doing school-wide contests. Start 
reaching out into the community to get support from local businesses. Just stay enthusiastic and keep working at it because it's, it's a long haul to build a big program. And a good program starts in the elementary schools and carries through the high schools. I think to be able to be flexible and to be able to work with other um, departments to get art in your school in different areas, not just in the art program, and that you don't have to be exclusively like an arts school or an academic school, that you can have many different, we have wonderful academics along with sports and our art program. We're not just focused on one area. I believe the school's overall success, our school API is 865, which is extremely high for a high school. 800 is the current target for the state. When I look at why I think our school scores so well, I think it's because so many of our students are so connected to the school. And for many of the students, their connection could be through athletics. For other students, their connection is through the arts. In other words, when they get up in the morning and think about coming to school, they think specifically about their arts class. And then our arts instructors are very good about motivating students not only to excel in the arts, but to pay attention to their core academic classes as well. So it's that ability to, to blend and to support students, to be successful students, that the arts instructors are very involved with. And then in our arts classes, they do both content area reading in the arts, and they do writing as part of their arts program, which leads to an overall strength of the school in both areas. Oh.